All right, we're doing great. Our P&L table is set up to work with different scenarios. That's perfect. In this video, I will create a forecast area in the output balance sheet, which will be similar to the one we created in the P&L sheet. I can simply copy one of the columns and use paste special formats to paste it five times here. At the top, we can add a highlighted cell, which will show this is the forecast period. Let's copy the sum functions for assets and liabilities and equity. Excellent. I'll insert a few blank rows below the table. Here, we'll have several forecast drivers for the balance sheet items. And I would like to distinguish this area by coloring it gray. In addition, we can extend the check for the forecast period, given that assets must be equal to liabilities and equity. Okay, which are the drivers we can use to forecast balance sheet items? The supporting materials that come with this lesson explain this in more detail. Please look at them before continuing. If you have, or you already know how to do this, we can continue. Trade receivables, inventory, and trade payables will be modeled with the days technique, while other assets and other liabilities will grow as a percentage of revenues. There wouldn't be different scenarios for BS items as they mirror the P&L development of the business, hence represent a reflection of the P&L scenario chosen. The days calculation indicates how many days are necessary for cash receivables, pay trade payables, or that an item leaves the warehouse of the firm. Days sales outstanding, DSO, days payable outstanding, DPO, and days inventory outstanding, DIO, are working capital components. DSO is a measure of the average number of days a company takes to collect revenue after a sale has been made. A low DSO number means a company needs fewer days to collect its accounts receivables. A high DSO number shows a firm is selling its product to customers on credit and taking longer to collect money. DPO is a company's average payable period. Days payable outstanding tells us how long it takes a company to pay its invoices from trade creditors such as suppliers. DIO is a financial measure of a company's performance that shows investors how long it takes a company to turn its inventory into sales. Now that we've described DSO, DPO, and DIO, we are ready to calculate their values for the historical period. We see the math formulas for the calculation of days on the right. Starting with DSO, we need to divide the number of trade receivables by the revenues for that year and multiply by 360. And here is the DSO number for 2014. Let's copy it to the right. Similarly, DPO and DIO are calculated with the same formula, although revenues are replaced by COGS. I'll select the amount of DPO and divide it by the number of COGS in 2014. Let's fix the row reference of the COGS figure and multiply by 360. The result of the formula is negative. Since we are talking about days, it would be unnatural to have negative days. That is why I'll negate this number by putting a minus in front of the formula. Let's copy the same formula for DIO. We can do that because we fixed the row reference of COGS. This is how we calculate DSO, DPO, and DIO. Let's calculate the percentage of revenues of other assets and other liabilities in 2014. To do that, I'll divide both items by revenues. Fixing revenues row reference makes things easier. 
We've done a great job here. The next step will be to fill in the forecast period. Stay tuned.